हेलो एवरीवन आई एम सुशील सो एज वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द फोर्सेस ड्यूरिंग माय लास्ट वीडियो टुडे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द डायनामिक्स इट डील्स विद द इफेक्ट ऑफ फोर्स ऑन द बॉडीज इफेक्ट ऑफ Applied force on the bodies. Here we will be discussing about the Newton's law, which will deal with the motion of the object. That results from the action of the force. so before we start newton's law one important physical quantity now which is called linear momentum that we will try to understand what is it so for to understand this physical quantity we will do one activity suppose we take a cricket ball and we keep our hand below the ball say from a height h you drop the ball on the on the palm of the hand then you feel the impact same activity or same experiment is repeated when we take tennis ball from same height you drop the ball on the palm then we feel the impact we feel cricket ball have more impact than the tennis ball height being same the difference is only mass of the ball mass of the ball means mass of the cricket ball is more than the mass of the tennis ball so the impact is more with cricket ball than or compared to tennis ball second case we increase the height So height is h plus h one. Main side is more, and now we drop the ball on the palm. This activity we repeat with cricket ball as well as tennis ball. Then we feel impact is more as we increase the height. The velocity at the point of impact. is more than the previous case so the impact is more if we increase the height means 
velocity is more at the point of impact so impact is more when the velocity is more So the impact is proportional to mass as well as velocity. So the combined effect of the ball or we say any object, mass of the object, the combined effect of the mass and velocity this quantity, this physical quantity is termed as linear momentum. Your symbol is small p. So p is equal to m into v. As you know, mass is a scalar quantity and velocity is vector. So, mass into velocity is a vector quantity and linear momentum is a vector quantity. Now we see what is the unit of momentum. So unit of momentum is equal to unit of mass and unit of velocity. Unit of mass, of course we are dealing with SI unit of momentum. So unit of mass is kg and unit of velocity is meter per second. This we can also write kg into meter multiply both up and down with the s in second so this also becomes newton this is nothing m into a newton second so the si unit of momentum is kg meter per second or Newton second. Here Newton is the force or uh, uh, unit of force Newton. And if you go CGS unit of momentum, this will be unit of mass is gram and unit of velocity is centimeter per second. So CGS unit will be gram centimeter per second. 
or in terms of force if we say it will be die in second so this is all about the unit of momentum now if you go dimensional formula of p this will be dimensional formula of mass dimensional formula of mass and dimensional formula of velocity this is m and dimensional formula of velocity is its unit is meter per second so l for meter by t is for second so this will be m l t to the power minus 1 this is a dimensional formula for momentum So now we get a mathematical relationship between linear momentum and mass and velocity. Momentum is a function of mass and velocity. So change in momentum. we can observe change in momentum either by changing of m or change in v so if we take case 1 when there is a change in the velocity of the body change in velocity of the body mass remaining same or constant then change in linear momentum denoted by del p is equal to mass remaining constant change in velocity this del v is change in velocity and this del p is the change in linear momentum m remaining constant second case is when there is change in mass when there is a change in mass when sub atomic particles move with a velocity greater than the velocity of light there is a change in mass in that case
change in linear momentum P is equal to del m v and change in mass is there so first case change in velocity it is all we were be dealing in classical physics when the velocity of the particle is much much less than the velocity of light and case b is the case when subatomic particles is involved now we take one simple example calculate the velocity of a body of mass is equal to 2 kg is whose linear momentum is 5 newton second so this is the first example calculate the velocity of a body of mass 2 kg whose linear momentum is given as 5 newton second so we have to calculate v P linear momentum is 5 meter second. We know linear momentum is equal to m into v. m is given as 2 kg and they want v. What is the velocity of the body? So from a relationship P is equal to M into V, V is equal to P by M. P is given as 5 Newton second, mass is 2 kg, so it will be 2 kg. So V, you are getting 2.54 meter per second another example we will try to solve A car of mass is 1000 kg is moving uniformly at 10 meter per second. Moving with uh, 10 meter per second if the engine of the car if the engine of the car develops an extra extra linear momentum of 1000 kg meter per second calculate the new velocity with which the car runs 
कैलकुलेट द न्यू वेलासिटी सो विल सी वॉट ऑल पैरामीटर्स आर गिवेन कार इज हैविंग मास एम इज इक्वल टू वन थाउजेंड के जी फर्स्ट आई विल रिक्वेस्ट यू यू पॉज द वीडियो एंड ट्राई टू सॉल्व इट बाई योर ओन देन यू अगेन रिज्यूम द वीडियो टू चेक द सोल्यूशन सो मास इज गिवेन वन थाउजेंड एंड इनिशियल वेलासिटी इज गिवेन टेन मीटर पर सेकेंड If engine of the car develops an extra linear momentum, is one thousand kg meter per second, then they want what is the final velocity? From first part, we know initial linear momentum is m into v. This will be one thousand into ten. Kg meter per second. This is the initial momentum of the car. Now, car develops an extra. linear momentum of 1000 kg so increase in linear momentum is 1000 kg per meter kg meter per second then the total momentum is initial plus Extra generated by the engine. So if you say P F, it will be P I plus P extra generated by the engine. This will be ten thousand plus one thousand. This becomes one one zero zero kg meter per second. and pf is equal to mass of the car is constant mass is not changing this is the final velocity of the car as linear momentum is changed mass is constant so we will change so vf is equal to Final momentum by mass of the car. Mass of the car is one thousand. We'll cancel out. So this becomes eleven meter per second. This is the final velocity of the car. So this type of problems they may ask involving the linear momentum. so after the concept of linear momentum now we are ready to discuss about the newton's laws of motion if we apply force on an object object will move it will accelerate so all the motion related things will be solved 
or we can find out certain parameters that will deal with Newton law of motion. So now we see what is Newton's first law. Newton's first law of motion. statement every body remains in a state of rest or of uniform motion along along a straight line unless it is acted upon by an external force. So what is first law of motion? Newton's first law of motion, every body remains in a state of rest or of uniform motion along a straight line unless it is acted upon by an external force. So if on a body net external force is zero, then body will remain at rest or it will be moving with a constant velocity. If a body is at rest or moving with a uniform velocity, at rest means acceleration is zero, in uniform velocity means also a is equal to zero, there is no change in velocity. In both the cases, the net external force on the object is equal to zero. Means if a book is resting on the top of a table, it is at rest, means net force on the book is zero.
for that we will see from the videos of introduction of forces gravity is is acting on the book is m into g contact force is acting in a forward direction in this direction there is no motion it is at rest means a is equal to 0 so from this what we get net force is equal to 0 means n minus mg is equal to 0 so n is equal to m into g In vertical direction there is no motion a is equal to 0 at rest so net force will be 0 so n is equal to m into g all the forces are neutralized this law states that every body resist the change in its state of rest or that of uniform motion this property is also known as inertia or the mass inertia means if anybody is at rest it tends to be at rest unless external force is applied or the body is moving with a uniform velocity or moving with a uniform speed along a straight line it will tends to maintain that state unless external force is applied on the body to change its state so this is inertia means it wants to maintain its own state so newton's first law is also called the law of inertia if no force acts on a body there always exists a reference frame in which the body has no acceleration. This is all about Newton's first law. Now we see Newton's second law of motion. what is it rate of change of linear momentum rate of change of linear momentum is is directly proportional to the net force net force acting on the body
and takes place in the direction of the force. the direction of force. Rate of change of linear momentum means change in momentum over time is directly proportional to the net force acting on the body and takes place in the direction of force. Now we see derivation from this in mathematical form. What relation we get from Newton's second law? We consider a body of mass m and is moving with initial velocity. is say u. So we have a mass m moving with initial velocity u and a force f acts on it for t seconds. Force f act on body for a period of for period of t second and because of this velocity changes to v velocity now velocity is v So mass m moving with velocity u, a force acts on the body for a period of t seconds and its velocity becomes v. So initial linear momentum pi of the body is m into u and final, final linear momentum of the body will be m into v. So change in linear momentum in t seconds, change in linear momentum in t seconds is Pf minus Pi, this becomes Mv minus Mu. So rate of change, rate of change of linear momentum so rate of change in linear momentum becomes mv minus mu by t. So now we have rate of change of linear momentum. And the statement says the rate of change of linear momentum is directly proportional to the net force acting on the body. So F is directly proportional to mv minus mu by t. If we rearrange, if we take m outside, this becomes v minus u by t. And from equation of motion, we know v is equal to u plus a t. So v minus u 
by t is equal to a. So this becomes m into a. So f is directly proportional to mass of the object and the acceleration of the object. Or we can write F is equal to K M into A. K is the proportionality constant. If a force acting on a body of unit mass produces in it unit acceleration means if m f is equal to k m into a if m is one unit one unit acceleration is produced then the force acting on the body is one unit then k becomes one and we get F is equal to M into A. This is the mathematical expression we get from Newton's second law of motion. F is equal to M into A. So unit force is that force acting on a body of unit mass which produces in it a unit acceleration. So net force acting on the body produces net force acting on a body of mass m produces acceleration in it. This law is the fundamental law of nature and mathematically force is, is the product of mass and acceleration. Now we see what is the unit of mass is kg and unit of acceleration is meter per second square. So unit of force become kg meter per second square this is we call Newton SI unit of force is Newton and from here we get a relation kg meter per second square is equal to Newton Now suppose we take a hammer and we want to nail to a wall then we apply a large force on the head of the nail in a very short period of time. So 
say this is wall. We have a nail. We want to fix it on the wall. For that, we take a hammer. And we blow on the head of the nail. The contact of hammer and the head of the nail is very short, only for a fraction of a second. But what we observe, velocity of the hammer before hitting, say it is VI, and just after hitting, this V almost becomes zero. This almost becomes zero. So there is large change in velocity of hammer. So there is a change in momentum of the hammer and as we know the rate of change of momentum is applied force F is equal to m into a or we can write F is equal to v minus u by t we can further write mv minus mu by t or final momentum minus initial momentum over time is f or change in momentum by t is f or change in momentum is equal to f into t. change in momentum is equal to change in momentum change in momentum is equal to product of the force and time for which the force is applied this product is called impulse When a large force is applied for a very short period of time, the product of force and time is called impulse. So impulse is equal to force into time. And then unit of impulse becomes unit of force and unit of time unit of force is Newton and second for time so n into s becomes a unit of impulse Then dimensional formula for impulse dimensional formula of force and dimensional formula of time dimensional formula of force is m l t to the power minus 2 and dimensional formula of time is t so this becomes m l t to the power minus 1 
सो अकॉर्डिंग टू न्यूटन सेकेंड लॉ एसोलेशन प्रोड्यूस्ड इन अ गिवन मास एम इन टू ए इज इक्वल टू एफ एंड ए इज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्सनल टू एफ एज एम इज कॉन्स्टेंट एज एम इज कॉन्स्टेंट सो द ग्राफ ऑफ एसोलेशन वर्सेज फोर्स is directly proportional to force and acceleration if we plot on a graph we get an straight line straight line graph similarly from second law if force is constant then mass is inversely proportional of acceleration or we say acceleration is inversely proportional to mass if we plot a curve plot a graph between the mass over acceleration we will get this nature of the curve as we have already said unit of force is newton si unit of force and cgs unit is dyne so definition of newton if a force acting on a body of mass 1 kg produces in it an acceleration of 1 meter per second square then the force is said to be 1 newton see from this mathematical relation if the mass is 1 kg and acceleration produced by a force is 1 meter per second square then this force is 1 newton so 1 newton is equal to 1 kg meter per second square and if you see in CGS system unit is time so definition of time One dyne is equal to mass unit in CGS mass is one gram and acceleration is centimeter per second square. So we get one dyne is equal to one gram per centimeter square and SI unit one newton is equal to 1 kg per meter square so now we will establish a relationship between Newton and Dyne so 
सो वन न्यूटन इज इक्वल टू वन के जी के जी इफ वी गो इन ग्राम दिस बिकम वन थाउजेंड ग्राम एंड द मीटर इज बिकम हंड्रेड सेंटीमीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर सो वी कैन राइट टेन टू द पावर थ्री इंटू टेन टू द पावर टू ग्राम सेंटीमीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर एंड दिस क्वान्टिटी इज वन डाइन सो दिस बिकम्स टेन टू द पावर फाइव इंटू डाइन सो वन न्यूटन इज इक्वल टू टेन टू द पावर फाइव डाइन्स इज द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द न्यूटन एंड डाइन यूनिट Now we'll see about gravitational unit of force. If a force acts on a body of unit mass. and produces in it an acceleration equal to the acceleration due to gravity of earth during the introduction of force video we have discussed if a body falls under gravitational field then acceleration a is equal to g means acceleration due to gravity then the force is said to be gravitational unit of force f is equal to m into a in case of gravitational unit of force m into g if mass of is 1 kg and the acceleration produced by the force is 9.8 meter per second square then this f is called the gravitational unit of force si system gravitational unit of force becomes kg force represented by kgf so this f becomes kg f this is the notation kg f force means force due to gravity and 1 kg f means 1 kg gravitational force is equal to 1 kg into 9.8 meter per second square this is equivalent to 9.8 newton because kg this quantity is newton we have already discussed before so 1 kg force 1 kg force means 1 kg gravitational force is equal to 9.8 newton in si unit if we go in cgs unit then 1 gram force is equal to m is 1 gram acceleration should be produced 980 cm per second square so this becomes 980 dyn so 1 kg force is how much 9.8 newton and 1 gram force in cgs unit 1 is equal to 980 dyn this is all about the newton second law its interpretation mathematical relation relation with change in momentum then we see we already discussed about the impulse 
relation between Newton and Dyn and gravitational unit of force. The Newton's third law of motion. Statement for every action there is an there is an equal and opposite reaction. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. An action and reaction is on two different bodies. So if a body A exerts a force F on body B, if a body A exerts a force F on B then B exerts a force minus F on A hence B exerts equal force but in opposite direction so if A exerts a force on B F B A force on B by A then B also exerts equal and opposite means B exerts force on A by B so we have a relation F B A is equal to minus F A B So if we throw a ball on a wall, ball hits the ball, a ball hits the wall, say with a force of F, then ball then wall also hits back the ball with the same force F but in opposite direction. This is ball. If we take a ball and we throw. Then ball hits the wall with a force of F. So ball hits on the wall. Wall also hits the ball with the same force F. But in opposite direction. So ball hits the wall is action. Then wall hits back on the wall. On the ball is the reaction force. So action and reaction force is acting on two different bodies thank you guys that's all for today go through the videos and analyze the things and I hope you will enjoy it. Thank you.